In the previous video, we have seen how the rate of reaction can be measured in two different ways just by monitoring the change in concentration of one reactant. For the example that we have used previously, the reaction follows a direct one-to-one -one ratio between the reactant and the product such that A reacts to form B. However, what will happen if the stoichiometric coefficients for a reaction are not the same? Hey everyone, welcome to Siri Pinchara Kimia Awa. In this video, we are going to determine the rate of reaction by using the concept of relative rate by comparing the rate of consumption of reactants with the rate of formation of products through a concept called differential rate equation. So let's have a look at what differential rate equation means. Differential rate equation is an equation that shows the relationship between the rate of change of reactants with respect to rate of change of products. This arises from the relationship between stoichiometry and rate of change. Let's have a look at a simple reaction as follows. A will react to form B. Just by stating the obvious, we can tell from the equation that one mole of A will react to form one mole of B. This means that for every one mole of A reacted, one mole of B will be formed within the same time period, which means that the rate of change of A is the same as rate of change of B. Despite having the same value between the rate of change of A and the rate of change of B, these two have different signs. This is because A is a reactant, which means that over the course of reaction, A is being used up, whereas B is being formed. Thus, the rate of change of A will have a negative value because the concentration of A is decreasing over time, whereas the rate of change of B will have a positive value because throughout the course of reaction, the concentration of B will increase over time. Thus, as rate of reaction can be determined by monitoring the rate of change of a species or another, we can come up with the following relationship. Rate of reaction equals to negative rate of change of A equals to positive rate of change of B. Please note that the value of rate of reaction is always positive. On the other hand, let's have a look at the following reaction. A reacts with 4B to form 2C. By looking at the stoichiometry relationship, we know that in order to form 2 mole of C, 1 mole of A and 4 mole of B reacted together and they are used up at the same time. This means that the rate of formation of C is twice the rate of consumption of A. At the same time, the rate of consumption of B is four times the rate of consumption of A. We can rearrange these two equations with rate of consumption of A as the subject, and this will give us the following. Rate of consumption of A equals to half the rate of formation of C. And rate of consumption of A is a quarter rate of consumption of B. Together, we can combine these two equations to give one unified equation as follows. Rate of consumption of A is equals to a quarter of rate of consumption of B equals to half the rate of formation of C. And these terms are equal to the rate of reaction. In general, if we have the following equation, we can write down the rate of reaction as follows. Rate equals to 1 over A, which is the stoichiometric coefficient for A, multiplied by the rate of consumption of A, equals to 1 over B, 
which is the stoichiometric coefficient for B, multiplied by rate of consumption of B, equals to 1 over C, which is the stoichiometric coefficient for C, multiplied by the rate of formation of C, because C is a product, equals to 1 over D, which is the stoichiometric coefficient for D, multiplied by rate of formation of D. This equation is what we call as differential rate equation. Let's have a look at how differential rate equation can be utilized. Let's have a look at an example to see how we can utilize the differential rate equation. So let's have a look at this example. Write the rate expression for the following reaction. So we have 4NH3 gas reacting with 5O2 gas forming 4NO gas and 6H2O gas. And then the second part of the question is, the rate of disappearance of oxygen is 0.02 molar per second. Determine the rate of formation of NO and H2O and determine the rate of disappearance of NH3. Let's have a look at the solution. So we have this equation, as we have seen, and we can apply the differential rate equation to give the following. Rate equals to negative 1 over 4 in bracket rate of change of NH3. Usually in the previous example, I have put the negative inside. You can also put it outside, it doesn't really matter as long as the term represents the reactant, you will have a negative sign somewhere. This equals to negative 1 over 5, because 5 here for the oxygen, rate of change of oxygen equals to positive 1 over 4, rate of change of NO, which is here, equals to 1 over 6, rate of change of H2O. So this is the differential rate equation which is expressed here for this reaction. Now, let's have a look at the second part of the question which is you have to find the rate of formation of NO and rate of formation of H2O. So you are given the rate of disappearance of O2 which is 0 0.020 molar per second. So, we have to find the rate of formation of NO and H2. So first of all, we know that the rate of disappearance is O2, uh, of O2 is 0 0.02. This means that the rate of change is a negative 0 0.02. So we have to be a bit, um, a bit careful here because when we say the term disappearance, this shows that we are losing O2, which means that it implies that this value can be negative, okay? So when we're talking about just the change, what kind of change O2 undergoes, does it add up or does it decreases over time? So from the word disappearance, we can put the negative sign. So DO2 over DT represents rate of change. Whereas if we put the negative on the other side, if we move this to the other side, we will get negative DO2 over DT, which equals to 0 0.02, that will mean that it is rate of disappearance. Okay, so what can we do using this information? We want to find the rate of formation of NO. So we can just pick the part here, negative 1 over 5 DO2 DT equals to 1 over 4 DNO DT. So we use that, 1 over 4 d and o dt equals to negative 1 over 5 d o 2 dt and here we don't have to use the rest of it because we don't care about the rest of it we just want to know the rate of formation of an o okay so from here we can rearrange the equation to give rate of change of an o so we move it to the other side we'll get this expression here and then do 2 dt we have the value here negative 0 0.02 substitute into the equation we'll get negative 4 over 5 multiplied by negative 0 0.02 equals to positive 0 0.016 molar per second now 
this is the rate of change of NO here. The rate of change of product is also the same as rate of formation of product. Therefore, the rate of formation is 0 0.016 molar per second. Now let's have a look at how we can use the same technique to find the rate of formation of H2O. So using the same equation here, we take the H2O, so the information for H2O because this is the one that we're going to look for and then we use the one for oxygen because we already have this information and now from here it's just a matter of rearranging the equations. So we will find the rate of formation of H2O equals to negative 6 over 5 DO2 DT and then you substitute the value which is negative 0.02 and then calculate this, you will get rate of formation of H2O as 0.024 molar per second. And then, using the same technique, we can find the second part of the uh, question, the rate of disappearance of NH3. So, we want to be concerned about this one here, this term. So, we take NH3 and we can take O2, okay? So just these two. We can also use NO or H2O because we have already calculated that. But it's just to be on the safe side, we use the one given, which is the information for rate of change of O2 or rate of rate of disappearance of O2. So from here, we can just rearrange the equation, which will give you the following terms. And then just substitute the value, you will get rate of change of NH3 equals to negative 0.016 molar per second. However, the question asks you to find the rate of disappearance, not the rate of change. Remember that the rate of disappearance has a negative connotation to it, well, has a negative sign to it, which makes the value positive. So here we have negative value, but we know that NH3 is a reactant, so the rate of change is negative. So for us to find the rate of disappearance, we just put a negative sign in front of in front of this term. So when we put negative sign in front of this term, it will become negative multiplied by negative 0.016 and we will get positive 0.016 molar per second. So that is how we can use this um, differential rate equation to solve problems. From this example, we can see that the rate of change of one species affects the rate of change of other species in the same reaction. This is due to the stoichiometry of the reaction. In a nutshell, as we have seen in the previous video, we can calculate the rate of reaction by monitoring the rate of change of a reactant. In addition, if we know the rate of change of one reactant, we can use this to determine the rate of change of another reactant or products by applying the differential rate equation. So I hope you find this video beneficial for you and if you do enjoy the video as well, please give this video a like and share. And also, you can subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. That's all from me. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay well. Bye!